Krutika, a cloud support engineer here at the AWS office in Seattle. Today I'm going to show you how users can revert to a known stable kernel after an update or OS patching prevents the Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud instance from rebooting successfully. Let's get started. In this video, I'll walk you through all the steps that can be performed if after a kernel update, the instance can't be connected because of the corrupted kernel. You can't use SSH to connect to the impaired instance. However, you can create a temporary rescue instance, then remount your Amazon Elastic Block Store volume on the rescue instance. From the rescue instance, you can configure your grub to take the previous kernel for booting. Now I'll show you how to attach the root volume to a rescue EC2 instance. Before making any changes, it's a best practice that you take the snapshot of the EBS root volume. For more information, see the Associated Knowledge Center article. From the AWS Management Console, open the Amazon EC2 console. Make sure that you are in the correct region. Select Instances from the Navigation pane and then choose the Impaired Instance. Choose Instance State, Stop Instance, and then select Stop. Launch a Rescue EC2 instance in the same availability zone as the impaired instance. In the Storage tab under Block Devices, select the volume ID for Dev SDA1 or Dev XVDA. The root device differs by AMI, but Dev XVDA or Dev SDA1 are always reserved for the root device. Choose Actions, Detach Volume, and then select Yes, Detach. Please note, tagging the EBS volume before detaching it will help in identifying the volumes later. Choose Volumes from the Navigation pane, and then choose the detached root volume of the impaired instance. Choose Actions, Attach Volume. Choose the Rescue Instance ID and then set an unused device. In this example, Dev SDF. Mount the volume of the impaired instance to the rescue instance. Use SSH to connect to the rescue instance. Run the lsplk command to view your available disk devices. The following is an example of the output. Please note, Nitro-based instances expose EBS volumes as NVMe block devices. The output generated by the lsplk command on Nitro-based instances shows the disk names as NVMe. For more information, see the Amazon EBS and NVMe on Linux instances documentation linked in the Associated Knowledge Center article. Mount the root partition of the impaired instance volume to directory MNT. In the preceding example, dev nvme 2 n one p 2 is the root partition of the impaired instance volume. For more information, see the Associated Knowledge Center article. You can now access the data of the impaired instance through the MNT directory. Mount dev run proc and sys of the rescue instance to the same paths as the newly mounted volume. Call the chroot function to change into the mount directory. Please note, for separate boot partition, please mount to mnt boot before doing chroot. Update the default kernel in the grub bootloader. The current corrupt kernel is in position 0 in the list. The last stable kernel is in position 1. To replace the corrupt kernel with the stable kernel, use one of the following procedures based on your distro. Grub1 for Red Hat 6 and Amazon Linux, Grub2 for Ubuntu 14.04, 16.04 and 18.04, Grub2 for Red Hat 7 and Amazon Linux 2, Grub2 for Red Hat 8 and CentOS 8. Grub1 for Red Hat 6 and Amazon Linux 1, use the set command to replace the corrupt kernel with the stable kernel in the boot grub grub.conf file. 
grab 2 for Ubuntu 14.04, 16.04 and 18.04. Replace the grub default equal to 0 default menu entry with the stable grub default equal to saved value in the etc default grub file. Update grub to recognize the change. Run the grub set default command so that a stable kernel loads at the next reboot. In this example, grub set default is set to 1 in position 0. Grub 2 for Reddit 7 and Amazon Linux 2. Replace the corrupt grub default equal to 0 default menu entry with the stable grub default equal to saved value in the etc default grub file. Update grub to regenerate the boot grub2 grub.cfg file. Run the grub2 set default command so that the stable kernel loads at the next reboot. In this example, grub2 set default is set to 1 in position 0. Grub2 for Red Hat 8 and CentOS 8. Grub2 in Red Hat 8 and CentOS 8 uses BLS CFG files and entries in bootloader for the boot configuration instead of the previous grub.cfg format. It's a best practice to use the grubby tool for managing the BLS CFG files and retrieving information from the directory under bootloader entries. If the BLS CFG files are missing from this location or corrupted, Grubby doesn't show any results. You must regenerate the files to recover functionality. Therefore, the indexing of the kernels depends on the .conf files located under bootloader entries and on the kernel versions. Indexing is configured to keep the latest kernel with the lowest index. For more information on how to regenerate BLS configuration files, see the documentation linked in the associated knowledge center article. Run the grubby default kernel command to see the current default kernel. Run the grubby info all command to see all available kernels and their indexes. The following is an example output from the grubby info all command. Please note the path of the kernel that you want to set as the default for your instance. In the preceding example, the path for the kernel is at index 2. Run the grubby set default command to change the default kernel of the instance. Please note, replace the kernel version with your kernel version's number. Run the grubby default kernel command to verify that the preceding command worked. Exit from cheroot and unmount dev run proc and sys. Unmount volumes, detach the root volume from the rescue instance and then attach it to the impaired instance. From the Amazon EC2 console, choose instances and then choose the rescue instance. Choose instance state, stop instance and then select stop. Detach the root volume from the rescue instance. Attach the root volume you detached to the impaired instance as the root volume and then start the instance. Please note the root device differs by AMI. The names devxvda or devsda1 are always reserved for the root device. The stable kernel now loads and your instance reboots. Thank you for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.